Well, good morning and welcome to our online worship for this, the second Sunday of Easter. As usual, the majority of our service today was recorded much earlier this week, before the news of the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And it didn't feel right to put out the service without acknowledging the immense impact he has had, both on our nation and around the world, not least in his enduring support of his wife of over 70 years, Her Majesty the Queen. And it is, of course, to her and the wider royal family that our thoughts turn at this difficult time. But whilst the nation mourns, as Christians we have cause for hope. This past week, and for many weeks to come, we're celebrating Easter. The good news that Jesus Christ didn't just come back to life. Rather, he broke right through death and out the other side. That where he is, we may be also. The Queen in recent years has been increasingly outspoken of her faith in this same Jesus Christ, a faith which was shared by Prince Philip, and a faith which will be an immense source of comfort, hope and strength to her in the coming weeks and months. So today, in the hope and joy of Easter, we entrust Prince Philip into the hands of Jesus, along with the Queen and their family, as they stand beside the empty tomb of our risen Saviour. So in a moment's quiet, uh, let's give thanks for Prince Philip uh, and offer our own prayers for his family at this time. Let us pray. In this moment of sorrow, the Lord is in our midst and consoles us with his word. No eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Almighty and everlasting God, the life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind goes over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But you are forever, from everlasting to everlasting. And we put our trust in you, for you have promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. Heavenly Father, into whose hands Jesus Christ commended his spirit at the last hour, into those same hands we now commend your servant Philip, According to your promises, may death be for him the gate to life and to eternal fellowship with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, surround the Queen and the royal family with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Amen. These and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus, who through his life, death and resurrection offers us hope instead of despair, life instead of death. Amen. So we continue with our worship for today. So I'm going to hand over to Mandy, who's at St. Martin's in Llan Martin. Well, welcome to our service of the word from Llan Martin Church. And it's good to have you with us today. So let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has made us light to the world. 
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Living Father, who has given your only Son to be the way, the truth and the life, grant that in him we may faithfully seek you, joyfully find you and forever possess you. Blessed be God forever. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Let us walk in newness of life to live his risen life, that dead to sin we may live in his goodness. Let's just take a few moments to allow ourselves to call to mind the ways we have fallen short of God's best for us. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us, Father, forgive us save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May God, our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. We will now have our hymns, readings and sermons. Reading from John 1 That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. 
The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet talk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in light, as he has in light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Confess our sins. He is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from John 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. Disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Reach out your hand, and put it in my side. Stop doubting, and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I was younger and I was told I had to tidy my room, um, my solution was to cram it all into the cupboards. 
It certainly didn't help that my bedroom was in the loft conversion, and so I had rather spacious cupboards um, to cram it all into. The problem, of course, with this approach is that I hadn't actually tidied my room. It certainly looked tidy. The mess was gone. But all you had to do was open the cupboards and you quickly see that the mess was still there, just condensed and hidden away. And actually, if I'd done anything, it was to make the mess worse. Uh, before, when it was all scattered on the floor, I might have been able to find things. And that was all heaped up in the cupboard. There's little chance of that happening. That's how we so often approach our sins, isn't it? Hide it, cover it up, sweep it under the rug, so that on the surface, everything looks well. But we know that if anyone ever goes looking, things aren't as perfect as we'd like to make out. And it's not just our approach around others, it's our approach around God as well, isn't it? We heard in our reading from 1 John, uh, the letter we heard first, rather than the gospel reading we heard second. Uh, they both share an author. But we heard these words. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. When we get a good look at God, we see his purity, his holiness, his perfection, the bright light. And we'll make one of two responses. The response of Adam and Eve, or the response of the Pharisees. We'll either hide in the bushes, trying to cover ourselves in fig leaves. Don't come near me, God. Stay away. Or we'll be whitewashed tombs, putting on a front, outwardly obeying the law, living how we're meant to, whilst breaking every rule in our hearts. Look how good I am, the good I do. You could be either this morning, or perhaps a bit of both. But it certainly seems to get worse for us, because John continues if we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. Well, now the game really is on, isn't it? If we weren't fleeing for the bushes or getting our white paint out already, we certainly are now. If we say we're Christians, we can't walk in darkness. And knowing the darkness within us, We'll either turn back in despair and walk away, or we ever more desperately try to make our goodness outdo and cover up our darkness. Manage and minimise is how a guy called Glenn Scrivener put it on Twitter last month. That's our default response to sin. Manage and minimise. To try to do less bad and to try to do more good. And of course, all smiles on a Sunday. How are you? Really good, thanks. It doesn't help, does it? We know what's festering underneath the surface. For all the good, we're all too aware of the bad. If we say we have no sin, John continues, we deceive ourselves in the truth is not in us. In other words, to be a Christian is to be deeply aware of our sins and faults, to be deeply aware of our unworthiness. If we truly think we're free from, if we're see, if we truly think we're sin free, good enough for heaven exactly how we are, we haven't fully grasped the truth. We haven't got it yet, but if we have understood it, we know what a mess we're in. That's what the law was for in the Old Testament, to help diagnose and recognise the problem. 
But the Christian response to this awareness all too often is to be aware we are deep in sin, deeply broken, but then to go about outwardly declaring that we're all good. Uh, we outwardly declare, God, a liar, we, we don't have anything wrong with us, we're fine, whilst trying desperately to keep it all hidden in the cupboard where God's light hopefully can't get at it. But John, at the start of his letter, begins by declaring that they write these things, that your joy may be complete. So what on earth is to be joyful about in all of this? It's that God's response to sin isn't to demand that we manage and minimise it. He's not on his way to come check if we've tidied our room whilst we desperately cram it all into the cupboard. It's to come and help. We all think deep down that Jesus really must be deeply disappointed in us. We look at ourselves in all our unloveliness and, and ugliness and we know that if we saw it in someone else, We'd be repulsed and turn away. We'd recoil in horror. So we quite naturally assume that Jesus, in all his holiness and perfection, will be the same, or perhaps even much worse. After all, if we can't face our own sin in our sinfulness, how much more will he, in all his perfection and purity, how much more will he turn aside and run the other way? But this isn't the Jesus we encounter in Scripture. Look at him. At every turn, he sees the mess and the ugliness and the unloveliness, and he moves towards it without even thinking. His first thought, his first impulse is to draw near. He comes to prostitutes and tax collectors, lepers and adulterers, not repulsed, but in love, drawing near, bringing healing and wholeness. Whilst we worry that us coming close to sinners with people who publicly messed up will mean the dirt will rub off on our carefully applied white paint. Jesus races towards us without a second thought. And his blood cleanses us from all our sins. We're drawn to, to the lovely in others. I, for example, love my wife Katie because she's beautiful, creative, funny, strong, and she laughs at my jokes. I see the lovely in her, and I'm drawn to it. And we assume that God is exactly the same, which means we need to keep trying to be lovely, or he'll cast us aside like so many failed marriages. God isn't like that. He doesn't see the lovely in us because we're far from lovely. He sees us, as we are, and longs to create what is lovely in us. Far from hiding our sins, we should be shouting them from the rooftops, because the God who sees us exactly how we are, sees the state of our, our deepest being, isn't revulsed, but comes running to die to open his side that we might be cleansed in the blood and water flowing out. We needn't walk in the dark if we've grasped the truth of the gospel, fearful that our deeds will be brought into the light. We'll run to the light, bringing them all with us, laying them down that they might be dealt with, that the light would swallow up the darkness in us. Our sin a mess doesn't need covering up, hiding in a cupboard. It needs cleansing. 
Our sin isn't to be hidden in shame. It's to be revealed. For it testifies to the sheer goodness and graciousness of God. We see it in our gospel today. Thomas, who in my opinion is often unfairly called Doubting Thomas, has missed Jesus' first appearance at the resurrection. I don't think he's doubtful as such. I think he's more frustrated and angry. If you arrived 10 minutes after all your friends had seen something truly amazing happen, you wouldn't doubt them if they're all saying the exact same thing. You'd be frustrated and angry that you'd missed it. So he he lashes out. It's emotional language he's using. Unless I can see the wounds, unless I can put my finger in them, I, I won't believe. How could Jesus show up when I'm not there? But Jesus does appear again, doesn't he? Uh, And it's whilst Thomas is there. And what does Jesus say? He doesn't lecture Thomas about his lack of belief. He doesn't reprimand him for his anger and frustration. No, he appears in the room and says to all gathered, Peace be with you. And then he reaches out in compassion, inviting Thomas to do exactly what he said he'd need to do, to believe. And in that moment, Thomas, he doesn't even need to do it. He's instantly changed. In an instant, he sees Jesus for who he is. The church isn't a museum for perfect people where we all admire each other's perfections. It's not where the place where our paint is topped up to pro- better prop up our outward moral appearance. No, it's a hospital for the broken, a lagoon for the messy and dirty. It's blood and water flowing from Christ's side, cleansing us, in the tide. John finishes the portion of his letter we're reading today by saying, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Day by day, we're being renewed into the likeness of Jesus, having the lovely created in us through the working of the Holy Spirit. It's the task of a lifetime, not finished until we reach heaven. So we aim to live in accordance with God's commands, to do right and walk in righteousness. But when we do fail, It's not if, it's when. When we break God's commands, when we go off track, when we sin, we need not bundle it into a cupboard. We don't need to hide in the bushes or add a fresh coat of paint to cover up the stain. Instead, we have an advocate, someone who fights for us, Jesus Christ, the sacrifice for our sins. If we bring them into his light, they're driven out like the shadows they are. Washed in his blood like the stains they are. Our sin, along with the shame and guilt they bring with them, are gone. The burden carried away and we're renewed once more. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says Jesus. We don't need to work hard to sort ourselves out before we come to God. We don't need to put up a front, putting all our energy into being likeable and stopping the mask slipping. We need simply come. And this we do, 
we'll see Jesus already running towards us as fast as he can. Amen.
let us join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Shall we begin our prayers with a moment of stillness? Lord, at Easter we celebrate your resurrection power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us hearts to love you and help us to trust you, particularly in times and moments of doubt. We fail and struggle on times and need encouragement and support. Strengthen our faith, we pray. As your people, we share in the knowledge and goodness of your saving grace and love. Help us to encourage one another and know true unity. You are the gift of eternal life. Help us, Lord, to be the people you are calling us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the witness of your church. And we pray for our Bishop, Cherry. We pray for the Archdeacons, Jonathan, Sue and Ian. We pray for the Dean of St Wallace Cathedral, Ian Black. We pray for all area deans and ministry area leaders across our diocese. We also pray for all those who minister in your name and ask, Lord, that you strengthen their faith and their calling. Help your church demonstrate the power of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, sin and corruption, abuse of power, War and hatred are evident everywhere. But Lord, in our hearts we believe that these forces of evil and darkness can be overcome by the power of your Holy Spirit. Guide all those in authority to bring peace and justice. Your resurrection power can bring change, bring hope, bring love forgiveness and faith. Open all our hearts, Lord, to your transforming love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for those we love and for those who love us. Help us to share our faith with those around us. We want our families and our friends to know and experience your love. We want them to receive joy and newness of life in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local and wider communities. And Lord, at this time, we pray for our schools and all the members of staff. We pray for the children and the young people as they resume their studies and undertake their assessments this term. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those living and working in care homes. 
We want to praise and thank you for all the special places where individuals receive loving care. We know that this makes a world of difference. We pray for our hospital workers, our doctors and nurses. We ask that you strengthen and bless them. We thank you for them and the work that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all those who are sick and unwell. Lord, we name the people on our hearts right now. Lord, we trust in you and we pray that you will bring hope and healing, love and joy into the lives of those we have just mentioned silently before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we are confident in the power of Christ and know that in him we have eternal life. Lord, we pray for your mercy upon all those who have died recently. We give you thanks for the life of His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. We pray for our Queen and the Royal Family. Lord, we ask that you comfort all those grieving the loss of a loved one at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through him. So let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our collect prayer. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to the sending out. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.
Oh, hey.